Hey friend, welcome to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I'm Mike McCurry, your host. As always, I'm very thankful for the fact that you would take of your time and you'd invest it right here with this radio program. Now this week is going to be similar to previous weeks in that I told you each day of November, I'm going to be sharing one item that I am thankful for. And as you listen to this broadcast, I'd ask you to consider what are you thankful for? Oftentimes, we can just get bogged down in the mundane things of this world, in the helter-skelter craziness, the rat's race, right? But if we take a moment and pause, maybe even take a deep breath, and then think, Think about what God has blessed you with. I am a blessed man. All through this month, I've shared different items that I'm thankful for. Today, I'm thankful for the building that I'm in right now. Now, it's not to say this building and where it sits as you listen to this broadcast or maybe even watch the program on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, friend, it's been work. I, I'm, I'm not saying it hasn't been. For the last year, year and a half, we have been working. And can I say on behalf of the staff here at BTI, these folks, the team here at BTI, they're absolutely incredible. They are amazing. I'm thankful for them. And they did the lion's share of the work. You realize I'm an evangelism. I travel here and there and everywhere. Just came back from a trip to West Virginia. I'm all over the place. But God's given us such a great team here. They do amazing things, even when I'm not around. So I'm very thankful for them, but I'm thankful for this building and where it is and what God has allowed us to do for his glory. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What are you thankful for? You can contact me by texting me to tell me. We've already had people, I think just about every day, they text me and tell me what they're thankful for. And next week, Thanksgiving week, I'm going to share items that you've told me. This is, It's going to be a listener-driven show or listener-driven program next week because the entire week, I'm going to be sharing things that you are thankful for. You can text me today to tell me what you're thankful for at 309 316 7240 309 316 7240 you may be asking why did we invest so much time effort and energy into this new building well the main reason is that so that we could supply you with gospel tracks as quickly and as efficiently as possible because that's what our ministry is founded on. Well, there's other items like this radio broadcast that we dabble in that, that God has given us the liberty to pursue. But the main thing at Bible Tracks Incorporated and the main thing on the Bible Tract Echoes radio program is that you would consider using Gospel Tracks. If you'd like to, let me encourage you to check out BibleTractsInc.com or BibleTracksInc.org. We'll talk more about tracks in just a minute. Actually, we're going to talk about a specific tract today. You see, I haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to share with you. I'm going to actually read for you a very impactful gospel tract. It's called Ready to Die. Ready to Die. It's about the story of a young man named James Dunkley. It was actually written by James Dunkley's father. And I got to speak to his father on the phone not too long ago, and he was just blown away by the tens, I, actually the hundreds of thousands of gospel tracts, just like the one I'm holding in my hand right now, that we've put around the world free of charge. And his father, of course, the author of this gospel tract, he ordered about four or 500 of them, I believe, for his own personal use because he is telling people the gospel through the story of the loss of his son. Let me share it with you now. And if you'd like to get this gospel track, you can do so at any time from BibleTracksInc.org. If you know a veteran, if you know someone that has served in the armed forces, 
please go to BibleTracksInc.org. Whenever I come across someone in Walmart or in a store has a Korean War veterans hat on or a Vietnam vet hat on or a unit hat, or a ship's hat from the Navy, I always want to give them a gospel tract and say thank you for your service. I'd encourage you to do the same and this gospel tract would be a great one. Let me dive into this and if you would listen with intent ears because maybe you're listening right now and you'd say, I don't know Christ as my Savior, but you'd like to. Let me share with you. His wife called him her Renaissance man. James Dunkley was first a Marine sergeant and later an Army sergeant. He was a patriot and a military man, a loving husband, a devoted father, a counselor, and confidant to young people. He was a medaled black belt in karate, a martial arts and self-defense teacher. He loved young people, and they loved him. He brought joy and laughter wherever he went. Death held no fear for James. His motto was, ready to die. Why was he unafraid of death, though? That answer to that question started with a decision. As a boy, James memorized Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. One morning, he came to his mother saying, I am a sinner, and I know that I'm going to hell. I need Jesus. That day, he repented of his sins and asked Jesus to be his Savior. He received what God promises in Romans 6.23, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. At age 14 in Bible camp, he decided on the personal motto, Ready to Die. He shortened it to RTD7, 7, of course, being God's number of perfection. RTD7, ready to die. At age 17, prompted by some parents, he started a self-defense class for teens who were being bullied in school. The first night of class, he told them that the only way to be a fearless fighter was to be unafraid of death and to be ready to die. James used the biblical example of his hero, King David. David was a fearless warrior who was not afraid of death, pain, or loneliness. He told them that they could be a fearless warrior like King David if they knew the secret to overcoming fear. What was James's secret to overcoming fear? Well, the Bible verse, Matthew 10, 28 says, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. James's message was what he had learned, that fear has three sources. Well, the fear of death, the remedy for death, of course, is salvation in Christ. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But these three things, the fear of death being number one, next, the fear of loneliness, and third, the fear of pain. But as we talk about the fear of loneliness, the only remedy for loneliness is the promise of God's presence. God says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. We may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That's parts of Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. The fear of pain. The remedy for pain is having God's strength. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Psalm 73, 26. So now you've heard the remedies for the fear of death, the fear of loneliness, the fear of pain. A warrior who has no fear of pain, death, or loneliness is a valiant soldier, one who can go into battle unafraid because he is ready to die. Christ is willing to give a person that source of strength. When 9-11 happened, remember those days? It changed the world in James' life. He was 19 and he joined the Marine Corps. The following January, he wanted to fight terrorism and keep his family and country safe. In September of 2002, James was married, and by January of 2003, he was in Iraq and soon in the middle of battle. James was a Marine scout reporting on enemy positions, and he was in most of the major firefights. This time, he came through unscathed, with his unit receiving a special medal, the Presidential Unit Citation. Returning home that May, he soon informed his father that he and his wife were expecting a baby. Becoming a father himself excited him, but there was also sadness. His unit would be in Afghanistan when the baby would be born in March. But James did not make it to Afghanistan 
because he had a different and a more personal battle to fight. Remember, the due date for his son was March, but his infant son was born on Christmas Day three months early. Weighing only two pounds, Joshua, the son, was in intensive care for almost nine months. James was able to be stationed near Joshua so he could be there with him, helping him fight for life. Based on God's word, James had a certainty that if Joshua died, they would be together again in heaven. This certainty gave James and his wife the strength they needed to see Joshua through his battle for life. That Thanksgiving, James penned these lines. Besides the normal things that everyone is thankful for, I'm thankful for the things that most people are not. Rain, hurt, pain, death. The Lord has shown me the beauty of these things. Until you are truly happy with the bad, you can never really appreciate and be thankful for the good. Now, James's four years in the Marines were done. He was home with his family, but he felt that his job as a soldier was not done. After much consideration and prayer, he re-enlisted in the Army. Once again, he was Sergeant James Dunkley, back in Iraq, this time serving as a sniper, and then as a squad leader. During Operation Beach Yellow, the enemy opened fire, and in the ensuing firefight, James was shot through the heart. In an instant, he stepped from the presence of the enemy to the presence of the Lord. The men serving with him were devastated. They said that he was always calm and cool under fire, concerned about his men, and always using humor to break the tension. But James was prepared to be with his Lord, and because of his surety of his eternal destination, death held no fear for him. He told his wife that if anything would have happened to him, no one was to wear black at his funeral. He was going to be rejoicing in heaven, and he didn't want anyone on earth sorrowing for him. Over a thousand people came to his funeral. The church was filled with people, young and old, military and civilian, all of them who were befriended, counseled, led, taught, and loved by him. All of these lives were touched by a man who was ready to die. James's purpose in serving his country is expressed in his own words. The one thing I believe in above all else is love. I love my Savior, my family, my freedom, my friends. Most people view love as a word of emotion. I view love as an act of commitment. My act of love is my service in the military, protecting and preserving all the things I believe in most so that my children, family, and friends can enjoy, enjoy true freedom. I've seen war firsthand, and I've met people that have never known any of the freedoms that we take for granted, and I never want that for the people I care for most. Semper Fi. My question today for you, friend, is this. Are you afraid of death? You may have questions about this topic. I'd love to hear from you. Now, tomorrow, we may share the last few lines of this particular gospel track, but let me encourage you. In the meanwhile, text me at this phone number if you have questions. 309-316-7240. Again, if you have questions about your eternal destiny and you'd say, I'm not ready to die, Text me, 309-316-7240. I greatly appreciate your listenership today. Have a great day for His glory. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.